Well, good morning, everyone, and wow, what a way to start the day. I woke up from one of the most horrific nightmares, gotta tell ya. I don't know about you guys, but every now and then, if I go right back to sleep after waking from a dream, sometimes I'll go back to the same dream. And well, this was not the type of dream I wanted to go back to. So I looked at my watch, it was 4.55 a.m., and well, here I am, an early start to the day. It's take for them to just buy a Snapchat. Not for sale. Yeah, I, I don't know what you could offer them right now. Like, like 25? Not for sale. Well, you there's always a number. Profit. Like a trillion dollars you could buy. It is now 7.13 a.m. on Monday, February 1st, and I just published episode number 641 of the Cliff Ravenscraft Show. Jared Elrod just sent me a snap saying, hey, loving your snaps, you mentioned accounting with your wife. Is that a business, personal, both? What's your process? Thanks for the question, Jared. Stephanie and I, every month, get together and we do all of the accounting together for our business. What we do is we will open up QuickBooks, we will enter in all of our expenses, all of our receipts, we will pay all of the monthly bills. Next, we will scan all of our receipts, any paperwork that we have, and store that in PDF documents, and then we shred all of the originals. After we've done all the bookkeeping for the business and processed all the expenses, then we can take a look at our business account and see how much money's left over. Then Stephanie presents to me the personal budget that is proposed for the next month. Every now and then, Stephanie's proposed budget for our personal finances make me go, <gasps> The next step is to look at what's left over in the business account and make sure that we have enough to cover that paycheck. Of course, we have to take into consideration the amount of personal taxes and also the amount of taxes that the business has to match as well. Most months, there's not really that much of a problem covering whatever it is that Stephanie needs for the budget. However, every now and then, there's a little negotiation that happens into what Stephanie needs for the bottom line for our personal finances. Those negotiations can be quite stressful at times. But most of the times, it all ends well. Most of the time. Once we have come to an agreement that, yeah, we can cover this amount, then I write myself a net paycheck. I will then send an email to my accountant and let him know how much that I've just written myself a net paycheck for. And usually the next business day or two, my accountant will send me a pay stub that actually backs into the gross amount and has all of the payroll liabilities such as Social Security, Medicare, all of that stuff, both my portion and the company's matching portion as well. My accountant takes care of transferring the 941 withholding from my bank account over to the federal government. I personally take a form that my accountant fills out and I print it off and then send in a payment for my withholding taxes for the state of Kentucky. And that is pretty much the process for our monthly accounting. One interesting thing is that I only pay myself once per month. So today, Stephanie and I are going to do the accounting for January. We just wrapped up January, and I will pay myself today for January. Stephanie, for the personal finances, will take what I was paid in January, and she will give every single one of those dollars a name, and she will use that for all of our personal expenses for the month of February. And we also do the cash budget as well. Maybe I'll explain the cash budget in a future Snapchat story, but I think I'm going already pretty long on this one. However, I will wrap up my business accounting thoughts and let you know that everything that I just told you, we do once a month. Then once a month, my accountant will send me a big packet of quarterly tax documents that need to be processed, signed, and sent off to government agencies, and some with checks. And of course, the final quarter of the year is our year-end taxes. That packet's a little bit bigger, and I also have to fill out a Kentucky state sales tax form. When it comes to processing the quarterly and year-end tax paperwork, Stephanie's usually not involved in that process. I handle all of that stuff myself. And then, typically during the first week in February, I will go into my QuickBooks and process a detailed profit and loss report for the previous year. I'll take that report along with a bunch of other documentation to my accountant and he will process our business and our personal tax returns. Jared, thank you so much for submitting the question and I'm happy to include you in my Snapchat story today. Guys, go follow him, Jared Elrod on Snapchat.
That right there, my friends, is exactly what I had hoped and envisioned for the Cliff Ravenscraft show, the podcast, and also for my Snapchat story. If you guys aren't subscribed to the Cliff Ravenscraft show, go check it out. The Cliff Ravenscraft show, available in your favorite podcast app. Just want to say congratulations to my friend Pat Flynn. His book has hit number one in new releases for entrepreneurship, even beating Damon John. 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and we are finally going to start on accounting. All right, so we ran into a little snag during our accounting work, and it has to do with our Anthem health insurance. I'll try to keep this short. I started a new policy back in December of last year, replacing a policy that we no longer wanted. We paid the premium when we started the new policy, and then in January, on the 1st of January, there should have been a new payment due. There was no bill. I contacted Anthem's billing department, and they spent a very long time looking for our account, found it, and took the payment over the phone. Anthem then sent me this email with my confirmation of the payment with a full-on confirmation number. On January 20th, I logged into their system to see if they had issued a new bill for the February 1st payment. The good news is that my bill was showing up for my health insurance coverage in the system, but it said that it was due January 1st. However, I had already paid that January 1st payment on January 5th, and I have a confirmation email to prove it. I called Anthem's billing department on January 20th and spoke to Vincent. And Vincent said he could not see any payment that I had made. I then gave him the confirmation number from the email, and he looked it up, and sure enough, he was able to find it. Next, Vincent put me on hold for about 20 minutes while he spoke to somebody called an operations specialist. The operations specialist told Vincent that she found the payment and that it would be applied to my account and that it should show up in the online system within 24 to 48 hours. On January 27th, I once again logged in to see if there was a new bill for February 1st yet. Once again, the online system was still saying that I owed a payment of $1,097 due January 1st. On January 27th, I called Anthem Billing Department and spoke to Betty, and we had the same conversation about that missing payment and the confirmation number. Guess who Betty had to call? You guessed it, the operations specialist. Betty said that that Operation specialist noticed why the payment hadn't processed to my system and said that she was taking care of it and it would this time. And well, that brings us to today. We're doing accounting. I sign in to see if I can pay a February 1st bill. And well, I see this. The bottom line there says dental account, due date February 1st. And if you look over there, it says payment and process. That's because I just made that payment today using that online payment system. But now we'll go back to that screen and I'll show you what it says for my medical coverage, the health insurance part. You can see here it says medical account Cliff Ravenscraft does still say January 1st due date, zero dollars now, and now it says paid in full? Before it said that I owed 1097 on January 1st, now it says I owe nothing and it says paid in full. What the heck is up with that? Got back on the phone with Anthem's billing department today and spoke to Katik. And Katik says, we see your payment, $1,097. You're overpaid. He said that my policy never renewed at the end of the year. And I'm like, well, I just started it December 1st. It hasn't been a year. Nevertheless, he was convinced that I have no coverage and I'm beyond my open enrollment period. Vincent transferred me to the people in Kentucky who handle the enrollment for health insurance here in our state. I didn't get the name of the person that I spoke to, but I was starting to get a little bit flustered. That's putting it mildly. Anyway, the person at this Kentucky Connect that I spoke to first, and I did not get the name, was not very helpful and basically just said, you don't have coverage. She said, not only do you not have coverage, but you're outside of the open enrollment. You need to talk to your your insurance agent. But I tried to explain to her that I do have coverage. I'm logged into the Anthem system, and it shows me that I'm active. And she says, there's no way. And this, my friends, is a screen capture from the Anthem system showing health insurance, active coverage, eligibility start date, January 1st for the whole fam. 
And they said that I didn't renew into the new year, but if you look there, benefit coverage period, it says January 1st, 2016 to present. And there we are. Anyway, she told me there's absolutely no way that Anthem's system could tell me that I have coverage because, well, I'm not enrolled through their system. And she also told me that there's absolutely zero that she could do for me that I needed to call my agent. Well, I told her that my agent is my dad. I told her that prior to starting my own business eight years ago, I spent 11 years as the agent. And so I know exactly what he's gonna tell me. She was not helpful. And my blood pressure went up a little bit. Anyway, I was getting nowhere with that person. So I ended up calling my dad, AKA my agent, and he told me to call him back. So I did. At 1.47 p.m., I called Kentucky's Connect department again, and this time I spoke to Amber. Amber was a breath of fresh air. She listened to me. She believed every word I said about Anthem's showing me the coverage that I knew I was talking about as a prior agent. She told me that the, what she needed to do was to go ahead and re-enroll me with effective date March 1st. She said I need to call Anthem on Wednesday. They should have everything in there by then, and I can request them to go back and backdate that to January 1st. She also said if they can't backdate it on their end, to call them back on Wednesday, and they can do a manual request to have it backdated on their end. All total, I believe I spent just over an hour and a half trying to pay this bill. Most of it was spent on hold with Anthem. Anyway, we'll see if we can get it taken care of Wednesday. Now part of me is questioning whether or not that was worth sharing that extremely long story with you guys. If there's one takeaway, it's this. Document everything. When you have billing questions and stuff like that, write down the date, the time, the name of the person, and everything that happened. Stephanie had to go and get the kids while I was working on this billing stuff, so we didn't get to finish our accounting work. We would finish it now, but I can't. And we should be finished by now. I have a podcast interview scheduled in 13 minutes with my friend Glenn Johnson. Wow. I just got off the Skype call with Glenn Johnson. What an awesome interview. I am so excited that I had that opportunity. By the way, you can find Glenn's podcast at livefitlean.com. And next week, he'll post the interview that I did with him and it'll be at livefitlean.com slash 76, but that won't be live until next Wednesday. I'll have to admit that I was in a pretty rough mood this afternoon, to say the least, as a result of the ordeal that I had with Anthem. However, the time that I just spent with Glenn Johnson in that interview for his podcast, man, that really, really lifted my spirits. Absolutely loved it. It is now 5.55 in the evening. I've been up since 4.55 this morning. Stephanie and I are going to finish accounting after we take McKenna to dance this evening. The cool thing is, is I have 20 minutes to sneak a little nap in. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I had myself a good, actually 30 minute nap. Stephanie and I took McKenna to dance. Then Stephanie and I went to Chipotle for dinner. Then we picked McKenna up from dance. And now we're back at the house and getting ready to do accounting work. To finish it up anyway. We did it. It is 9 p.m. and we are completely finished with accounting. About time. Okay, so I have one more topic that I want to cover this evening and it has to do with sharing these Snapchat stories. I have absolutely fallen in love with sharing little random bits and pieces of my day through my Snapchat story. Ironically, on Snapchat, I really like the vertical video format on Snapchat. The thing is though, I don't like that stories disappear after 48 hours. As a podcaster, I like to archive things. Personally, I love how the Snapchat stories look and feel here on Snapchat. I like how it all works. I don't mind the fact that if I wanna show you something on the screen, I have to point it at something. I can't upload images or higher resolution, this or that. And while for the life of me, I can't imagine why the developers at Snapchat can't figure out how to not reverse the text on my t-shirt, the fact is, is that it doesn't bother me on Snapchat. It really doesn't. 
by the way, side tangent, you want to see something cool? Look at my backgrounds there. Do you see that? Now, watch this. Ha ha. How do you like that? You want to see how I did it? Basically, I created reversed images like this. On the Mac, we call this spaces where you can have multiple desktops with different wallpapers. And I created wallpapers with a reversed image so that they get reversed back to normal. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I love Snapchat. I, I don't have any complaints about it whatsoever. I like its limitations on Snapchat. However, ever since I've been using Snapchat Stories, which was going back to Wednesday, every day I download the MP4 version of my story after my last snap of the day. And what I've been doing is using these MP4 files as video episodes of the Cliff Ravenscraft show. In fact, after the end of today, when I post my last snap, I'll download the MP4 version, and this will become episode 642 of the Cliff Ravenscraft show. The problem, though, is this is vertical video. And I like it on Snapchat. I've already said that. But I don't like it how it plays in the podcast app. It looks horrible. I mean, it doesn't even fill the full screen. Why doesn't it allow it to go full screen in video vertical mode or vertical video mode? I know I could record snaps throughout the day in horizontal mode. However, as a Snapchat user, when the people that I follow in Snapchat have videos in horizontal mode, I find myself kind of annoyed. Yeah, annoyed by horizontal video. So I'm not going to change the way that I use Snapchat. I like vertical video in Snapchat. So the question is, do I continue to share the video archives of these Snap Stories as video episodes of the Cliff Ravenscraft show? One thought that comes to mind is, if I wasn't using these stories anywhere else, if I wasn't including them somewhere, would I still feel as compelled to create them? I mean, I put a lot of work into these each day. I mean, a lot of work and a lot of time. My heart tells me that I really enjoy this. I've, I've fallen in love with it. And I actually like sharing it in the podcast. I'm not so concerned about the reversed images from the front-facing camera. That doesn't bother me at all. And yeah, it probably looks a little amateurish when I use the other side of the camera to point at a screen to show you something. When it comes down to it, is it about the content and the information and the stuff that I'm sharing? And how does that weigh to the, the quality of the content, the quality of the production value? I mean, 10 second snaps makes a lot of sense here on Snapchat. But does it make sense in a podcast? I've been thinking about this stuff even before I published the first video archived episode of my Snapchat story to the Cliff Ravenscraft show. But then I got a comment on one of the episodes of the Cliff Ravenscraft show that I published, and it says, Obviously you mean for this to be an informal channel. All Snapchat stuff works this way. However, it does not look good, and I personally would be embarrassed to promulgate or archive such amateur work. I mean, I had my own doubts even before I published that first episode to the Cliff Ravenscraft show, but I have to admit, this feedback, it hit pretty deep. And then tonight, I got an email from Josh Thompson, and this is what he has written. He says, Cliff, I've listened to you and followed you since the Lost Podcast days. I have always been a faithful listener, and I still listen to every episode you create. I just wanted to let you know that the new Cliff Ravenscraft show is great. Love it. Also, loving the Snapchat episodes. Thanks for all you do. I wrote back to Josh, and I thanked him for his feedback. And by the way, I, I actually thanked the other guy for his feedback as well. I mean, it really does mean a lot to hear back from people what they think. Anyway, I thanked Josh and told him that it really meant a lot to me to know that he liked it because I had received some feedback from somebody else saying that they weren't so thrilled with the vertical video aspect and also the low quality production value that comes with Snapchat. 
I agree with what Josh said next. He said that it'll probably take some people some time to get used to this whole new format and the fact that it's the Snapchat style. What really meant a lot to me is that Josh says he's not one that consumes video podcasts very much at all. However, he says, I love the short story telling format. And well, I must say that I love the short story video format as well. I love this. I love this. I even went into Libsyn and expanded to the biggest accounts possible so that I could upload all this video content into the Cliff Ravenscraft show. Here's what I want to know. If you are a subscriber to the podcast, the Cliff Ravenscraft show, I want to know what you think. I know this sounds self-serving, but more specifically, I want to know what you think if you like what I'm doing, putting these vertical videos into the Cliff Ravenscraft show. I know it looks a little crazy. It's small, the little video up in the podcast player, but do you like it? The reason why I ask if you like it to send me feedback to let me know is because I can guarantee you the people who don't like it, they're gonna let me know no matter what. And well, I already have the inner critic that pretty much reinforces some of the things that they're saying, but are there some of you who are really loving this content? I mean, as much as my heart loves sharing it, that's what I want to know. So if you're a subscriber to the Cliff Ravenscraft Show and you like these vertical video updates, let me know. Feedback at gspn.tv. Again, the email address is feedback at gspn.tv.